How's it going guys? It's Slonebo2006 and I'm the creator of The Rush Machinima video for the Only in Battlefield 3 competition. Just wanted to give you a little brief overview of the hardware I'm using. Obviously I'm a clear Battlefield 3 fan as you can tell by uh, ignore the Dota posters but uh, anyway this is this is my lair. This is where the wife sends me. So. Anyway, I'll show you some of the hardware that I'm using, as well as the software to make uh, the videos we're doing, as well as some of the tricks, which I'm assuming is what the majority of you want to see. So, anyway, uh, here we go. Um, so, when I heard Battlefield 3 was coming out, I was actually at GDC and um, sat in on some of the uh, video um, lectures uh, by some of the DICE developers. At that point I decided I wanted to really pimp my rig out and get it all ready for Battlefield 3. Um, so as you can see here I have two GTX 580s. I'm running a Core i7 processor that's been overclocked to 4.2 GHz per core, up from 3.8. Uh, I'm running 16 GB of Corsair memory. Uh, and you can see my processor in there is liquid cooled with a Corsair uh, little cooler. And then I have a 128 uh, gig solid state drive that I'm using as my main drive. And then I have a 240 gig solid state drive that's being used for all the recording. So I can record at 90 to 120 frames a second on ultra and not degrade in any quality. And, you know, I don't end up hitting a bottleneck with the pipeline. Um, other than that, you can see, again, I'm a fanboy uh, with, by the looks of my case. Uh, pretty cool case. It's a Silverstone Raven 2 case. Uh, one of the benefits that I like of this case is your motherboard actually sits sideways. So um, all of the all of your peripherals and everything connect through the top. It uh, has really good airflow with these three huge fans at the bottom pushing air up through and then out the top here. So pretty cool case. I love it. Um, then I'm running a Corsair 1200 watt power supply. Uh, and then for my display, I have a 27-inch uh, 3D display uh, with my 3D Vision NVIDIA. Uh, and that, that is my main rig. That's my, my beauty, and that's the one I built for Battlefield 3. The one I had prior to that, I built for Crisis, the original Crisis, which was, I had two 8800 GTXs. Um, so, as you can tell, I'm an enthusiast. Computers are my thing. It's what I do for a living, and there you go. And then I have this secondary rig that I built um, that I'm using strictly for machinima-related stuff. Uh, it simply has a 560 Ti in it, just a really simple like Core i3, like bare bones rig that I have set up um, that I use for, um, you know, when I'm using this one to record some of the shots, I'll get on this machine and actually do some of the, you know, some of the playing uh, with my with my other account. Um, so that is that, and then now we'll get into the software side. All right, so now we'll actually get into the software side. Um, one of the key things that you need unlocked for your character um, is the PDW-R. Um, you can find it here. Uh, it's available for all kits, um, and that will actually enable you to hide um, your weapon. Um, and I'll show you here in a moment. So uh, first off, uh, let's move up to a position that we can get kind of a, an attractive uh, view, something somewhat semi-cinematic, obviously. Um, you know, not perfect. Um, now we want to hide our UI, so let's hit tilde, which is the key next to the one, and uh, that'll bring up, you can see at the top of the screen here, uh, an area that we can type, and if you hit the letter U, uh, that will actually uh, pop up uh, a hint, uh, and that hint will show you kind of the console commands that are available. Uh, UI draw enable is, is the one we want, so if you hit tab, and then hit type zero, so U and I draw enable zero, and hit enter, as you'll see, everything goes away. Just hit tilde to hide your UI again, and there you go. And now you can either hit J, K, or L, and that'll actually take your weapon, and it'll hide it. Um, so it's basically holstering your weapon. Uh, and now you have a, you know, a quote-unquote cinematic shot with a stationary camera. Looks all well and good, and obviously uh, the film that we did comprised of a lot of these. Um, there were some fade in and fade out, or zoom in and zoom out effects that we used, and ultimately all that was was cropping that was being done post-process within Sony Vegas. Uh, another trick you can use is, uh, as you can see here, we have the MAV. Uh, this trick actually allows you to get a shot kind of from above the, the scene, um, or like the shot of the helicopter coming around the building in our sh chasing the Jeep in our, our movie. Um, so it really provides a unique perspective uh, to the clip um, and allows you to uh, 
to capture an angle that really, you know, unless you're parachuting in and even that, you can see your legs and it's just, this provides a really unique, uh, unique uh, perspective on the scene. So now one of the things I'm going to... So now I'm going to log on to my other computer here and uh, actually shoot myself in the head. Um, that's the only way really to get rid of this gray effect from the MAV. You have to actually have another person or suicide or whatever. Obviously you can't bring up the suicide menu because you know you act, you have a the MAV active and you don't want to show on your UI. So what I did is on my other computer I shot myself in the head, causes the MAV to fall. That was kind of a glitch because it hit a building, but you get the general idea where the, the MAV will fall or sit on whatever building it's out on. So if you get a nice perspective uh, from the MAV and you're sitting stationary, you can shoot yourself in the head, you being the cameraman, and then the camera will either fall or sit there and just capture, you know, until the respawn timer resets, which obviously you can control that as a server administrator. Uh, the last piece I want to show here is uh, some of our moving scenes. Um, one of the moving scenes, I was simply the passenger in a vehicle when I was riding next to the other vehicle. Nothing special there aside from hiding the user interface. Uh, your weapon's automatically hidden. Uh, this right here, I'm just showing where you where you just by running with the knife, um, generally the knife's hidden off the screen um, for the most part. And so there's quite a few scenes where I, I would run like this and then I would crop my hands out basically. Uh, makes it really simple. Uh, there is, I, I, I've seen something in the comments where you can throw a grenade and then something with the uh, animation will glitch. I haven't been able to replicate that um, so I simply go with the knife strategy just because it takes up minimal screen space and allows me to capture um, a good amount of um, you know a good amount of the scene without having to crop much um, and obviously by cropping you know, you're recording at 1080p by cropping, you're reducing your overall quality, um, but it's not genuinely noticeable um, until, you know, you crop in too much, obviously. Um, so, anyhow, uh, the scene with the Jeep jumping off the, the one part of the city off the ramp, um, I, w I did by crawling, like you saw there. So I just basically crawled with the knife and then ended up cropping the view. And obviously I had the, the UI disabled, which I don't hear. So remember tilde, UI draw enable, zero, and then hit enter and hit tilde again to hide, at, hide it. And then, you know, at that point you have no user interface. And then, you know, you crawl around or run with a knife or bring out the PDW or bring out the MAV. Um, those are all just the different tactics that, uh, that we use to, to capture some of the scenes. Uh, obviously, as we find more or come up with more ideas until um, Battle Recorder is released, uh, we'll share those with you guys. Um, but uh, tonight we're going to be working on the sequel to The Rush, and we have a lot of great ideas uh, and a lot, of, a lot more experience now. Um, cause if, believe it or not, the last video we did, we went from storyboard to completion in about 12 hours. Um, this video we're actually going to give some time to, we're doing some effects and after effects. We're doing a lot of post processing to it. We want to make it genuinely feel like battlefield, but we want to add even more of a cinematic feel and our timetable is kind of open now. Um, I just want to say congratulations to the, the people that won the only in battlefield competition, uh, was disappointed that we weren't considered, but I also understand that. Uh, you know, Battlefield clearly had an agenda with what videos they picked because uh, the ones they did pick had, uh, you know, were just pure gameplay and ours was very, very much a cinematic experience. So anyhow, uh, stay tuned and uh, friend me on Battlelog. It's Sloan Bone X uh, or Sloan Bone XI or Sloan Bone XII. Those are my different accounts, but generally my main account is Sloan Bone X. Um, and then you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Sloan Bone. Cool. I will leave feedback or questions on this video, and I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can. And we plan on posting another video if there's enough interest. Thanks.